A lot of people choose to move to Minneapolis because it's a nice sized city with an affordable cost of living. Most of the people that I work with are moving to Minnesota from out of state and they are often coming from more expensive parts of the country, but not everyone is. So today I wanna to take a look at what the cost of living in the Twin Cities looks like and how that compares to some other areas that I see people coming from, as well as some areas here in the Midwest. My name is Mary Schumann. I'm a realtor here in the Twin Cities and I make videos to help people who are thinking about moving to the area. My channel focuses on neighborhood profiles, market updates, and what life looks like here in the Twin Cities or in Minnesota in general. So if that's the kind of information that you're looking for, I would absolutely love to have you along. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell and you'll know when I post a new video. Cost of living is actually a term used by economists and it refers to an index. So every place in the United States is compared to the national average, which is considered 100%. If a city has a cost of living lower than the national average, it will be expressed as some percentage less than 100. And if it's higher than the national average, that number is gonna be expressed as how much higher than the national average it is. For example, 100 and X percent. The magic number for Minneapolis is close to 103% of the national average. This index is broken down into segments like housing, transportation, food, and entertainment. And then that number given as a whole is a consolidation of all of these. Having a cost of living index of 103% of the national average is really a comforting number if you're looking for an affordable city. Remember that when they're looking at this, they are looking at all areas of the country and typically urban areas are way more expensive than rural areas. So housing is generally the most expensive part of nearly everyone's budget. Minneapolis housing is at 117% of the national average. And if you've ever seen any of my market update videos, you'll understand what's driving that. And I'll actually link to one of those up here. Here in Minneapolis, we are right near the national average for food pricing, sitting at 101% of the national average. For transportation costs, Minneapolis sits higher than the national average at 108%. This includes an average cost of gasoline, car insurance, maintenance expenses, and mass transit fare for the area. I was a little bit surprised by this one because I just returned from a trip to Northeast Ohio and gas prices were consistently higher than what I've been paying in Minnesota everywhere east of us. But then I looked on the AAA website and auto fuel prices in Minnesota are lower than the national average. So I'm assuming those costs are coming from things like insurance and other factors. Healthcare is at a wonderful 75% of the national average. If there's anything the past couple of years have shown us, it is exactly how important this piece is for everyone. And not only are our costs lower here, but we also have access to some of the best healthcare in the world with the Mayo Clinic being located within easy driving distance of Minneapolis and many high quality hospital systems here within the Twin Cities itself. Miscellaneous costs come in at 108% and these include things like goods and services not included in other cost of living categories like clothing, restaurants, repairs, entertainment, and other services. If we compare Minneapolis to large metro areas like New York, San Diego, or Chicago, we see that, no surprise, housing in New York City is 441% higher than Minneapolis, and cost of living there is 141% higher. San Diego is 35% higher overall, and housing is 110% higher. I moved here from Chicago, and cost of living is actually 15% higher there, but where they really get you is housing, because it is 54% more expensive to buy a home in Chicago than Minneapolis. Housing is the biggest driver of whether an area is affordable or not. I mean, we all need a roof over our heads. I see a lot of people coming to Minneapolis from Texas, most commonly the Austin area, but definitely from all over Texas. 
and I checked out Austin and Austin is actually coming in at 4% less expensive than Minneapolis. Rents are higher in Austin, but the median price to purchase a home is slightly lower there, at least according to the most recent data I could find. Looking closer to home at smaller cities in the Midwest, Madison is actually more expensive to live in than Minneapolis. Housing is 8% higher, food 3% more, more expensive, and healthcare is a whopping 19% more expensive. Minnesotans are definitely going to question why anyone would pay more to live in Wisconsin. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Milwaukee, Wisconsin is where you're going to find your bargain. And if you love Pabst Blue Ribbon, that's the place for you. Their overall cost of living is 2% less than Minneapolis. St. Louis has a 17% lower cost of living than Minneapolis. Everything there from housing to transportation, entertainment is lower cost. They do come in slightly higher on food. Des Moines, Iowa is also a bargain, coming in with a lower cost of living on every single metric and the net savings is at 24% over Minneapolis. If you have questions about living in or moving to Minneapolis or the Twin Cities, reach out. I'm happy to help you. You can check out my playlists on neighborhoods and suburbs and download my free relocation guide. I would love to be a resource for you as you think about making your next move. Have a great day.